Hello and welcome to EV Motoring. I'm Joe and it's time for another epic road trip. As you can see behind me, I'm at the, f the finish of the Tale of the Dragon where I just got to take my Polestar 2 2022 for an awesome drive on my way to Charlotte, on my way to Disney World. So now we're gonna jump back to Chicagoland and uh, you know talk about the trip plan a little bit and hit the road. So the plan will be day one, go into Louisville, day two, getting to Charlotte, day three, going to Disney World, where that will have my sister and her husband who have never been in an electric car during a road trip. So get to see how their experiences are with that. Then we will go on to drive them back to Charlotte and then I'll come home. Haven't figured out the route plan home yet, but uh, it's gonna be a great one. All right, I am here at my office in Oak Brook, Illinois. Uh, for those who don't know, Oak Brook is just uh, about 10 miles west of downtown Chicago. So it's time to uh, punch in the destination for today, which is Louisville, Kentucky, and see how uh, see what the GPS says as far as charging. All right, Louisville, Kentucky. Uh, for reference, I'm at 78% right now. I uh, charged up at home last night, but unfortunately my chargers here at work were occupied when I got here. So um, I kind of am stuck with uh, doing it this way of having to stop in Lafayette, Indiana. GPS says I'll arrive in Lafayette with 13%. Again, this is one of the great, um, as I've said in other videos, this is one of the great features about the Polestar 2. It shows the chargers that I need to do. So, so originally I thought if I charged to 100%, I could make it all the way to Indianapolis and not have to stop in Lafayette. Um, however, you know, it should be a pretty quick, as it shows here, 15 minute charge. And plus with the temperature outside, right now it's 32 degrees, but it's gonna be dropping down into the teens. And we have a 30 to 40 mile an hour wind coming from the west. So even though it's a tailwind, it is extremely cold wind chill. But uh, time to start the trip and head to Lafayette, Indiana, which is, let's see how far, 135 miles away. The car estimates we have 190 miles of range, but that is not realistic because it is not factoring in the temperature. Uh, for the climate settings, since this car does not have a heat pump, uh, that's unfortunate, it does hurt us a little bit, but I run uh, typically the number two fan speed, running 70 degrees is pretty comfortable for me. I'll actually throw my heated seat on level one here and I have the heater on. So uh, it'll be interesting to see the efficiency over this journey. For those of you who don't know, this is the 2022 Polestar 2 dual motor. So EPA rated, 250 miles of range. Um, it's a 78 kilowatt hour battery that has 75 kilowatt hours of usable. Um, that results in a very, very small buffer. So if you've watched our Volkswagen ID4 road trips, I typically try to arrive at destinations with one, two, three percent, uh, you know, really low state of charge. With this vehicle, unfortunately, once I get down to six or seven percent, the car struggles to maintain highway speeds. So I really want to try to be arriving at seven to 10%. So I really don't want to get down into those low single digits, especially with how cold it is outside. Um, I think I think the range or the ability to propel the vehicle will even be hampered a little bit further. But this is my first cold weather road trip in this vehicle. I know I had um, a little bit of cold weather on my last trip, but pretty insignificant. Um, compared to this is like actual true frigid weather. And what's great is you'll be able to see all the efficiency throughout this trip because we're gonna have ice cold temperatures, uh, freezing temperatures up here in Chicagoland. But then by the time I get to Disney World, uh, we'll get, you know, 80s. So you'll be able to see the difference in efficiency of warm weather versus cool weather. Also, uh, what I think will be an interesting thing on this trip is in episode two is will be the drive from Charlotte to Disney and back. And joining me for that drive is my sister and her husband. They have never been in an electric vehicle before other than uh, my sister rode with me for a couple hours on the Glacier Volkswagen ID4 trip. So it'll be interesting to see, um, this will be the first time they've ever had to do charging, how that, how that adapts for them. They're used to just hopping in their ICE vehicle and uh, driving wherever they, wherever they wanna drive. So we'll, uh, we'll definitely document how, the, how their experiences are um, on their first electric car road trip. So my plan for this trip is today I'm driving to Louisville, Kentucky. Uh, then tomorrow I'll be driving from Louisville to Charlotte via the Tale of the Dragon. So that's gonna be epic. Definitely stay tuned for that. Then uh, over the weekend, I will drive from Charlotte 
to Disney and then Disney back to Charlotte. And then I don't know my route home, but it'll be from Charlotte back to Chicagoland. Um, so that'll all be figured out a little bit later. But for now, just focused on getting to Louisville, Kentucky. earlier. Um, as I said, this is the 2022 Polestar 2 uh, dual motor, all-wheel drive. Um, but I didn't mention this is the base model. So no uh, pilot package and no plus package. So what does that mean? Uh, that means these are the base cloth seats. I do not have the wetsuit uh, type of material neoprene. I don't have the Harman Kardon uh, like 13 speaker audio system. I do not have the glass roof. So hopefully that keeps a little more insulation in this cold weather and also maybe a little bit quieter. Although uh, there's a lot of road noise coming through right now. I think it's just this highway in Indiana right now. But uh, most importantly, by not having the pilot package, I do not have uh, auto travel assist uh, or adaptive cruise. Uh, I forget what exactly what Volvo calls it. So um, I do have a form of lane keep kind of. If I stray out of my lane without a signal, it will kind of nudge me back into my lane but it certainly is not steering for me. I'm certainly doing the steering myself. And something interesting is right here, we have these uh, these buttons here that are, are for increasing and decreasing the following distance. Those do nothing. So if you're, uh, if you're looking at a Polestar at, at a dealership and they try to tell you that it has the pilot package, you really won't know unless you take it for a spin. Uh, the other way to know if it has the pilot package is the headlights, if it has the laser, uh, I think they're the laser headlights or, you know, a little bit fancier LED headlight versus mine are just the base LED. All of all of them still get that Thor's hammer signature, which looks great, but um, definitely a couple key features to look at if you're looking at a Polestar 2. I typically, I used to like uh, using adaptive cruise control and then, I don't know, it, every system's different. Some systems are so aggressive to try to um, like right now I'm approaching a truck and I've been in vehicles where it will, you know, I'm 20 car lengths away and it'll start slowing me down right uh, way too far in advance before I got a chance to change lanes. So that's kind of, I guess, a personal preference whether you'd like adaptive cruise or not. Hopefully now the road, the noise is a little bit quieter in here. The other thing that's crazy uh, about, you know, by, by not having the pilot package is these winds are the 30, 40, 30 to 40 mile an hour winds, maybe even stronger gusts, I don't know. It is, it's a crosswind, so it is certainly blowing me all over the road. And it's kind of actually impressive. I don't know when I've been in a car that's gotten blown around like this. And certainly in the ID4, big mushy SUV, you know, you get blown around. But this is, a, you know, sports sedan with a nice stiff suspension. And I'm still, still certainly getting up, still certainly getting pushed around a little bit. Um, so also now we're down to 45 miles to the destination. Something else that impresses me is this Google navigation. So it said when we left, I think we'd arrive with 12 to 13%, and through some spirited driving, it's now down to 10%. So it says we have 32% remaining, and it says that it was sold. It's basically saying we'll use 21%. It actually just bumped back up to 11%. So yeah, it says we'll use 20% over the remaining 44 miles. So something I'll note is in the last trip when it was warm weather, through all my driving, I noticed if I was leaving and it said I would arrive with say 10%, I a lot of times would arrive with 13% if it was like a 100 mile drive. 
so I'd actually gain a couple percent. This has been more consistent, um, maybe, have, maybe have lost one or two percent, but still given the frigid temperatures and these incredible crosswinds, uh, major thumbs up to Google Maps to be able to figure out you know, this route planning that, uh, that I'll be able to make it to Lafayette. I was worried, I certainly was a little worried that I was gonna have to slow down um, and certainly drive you know, maybe 65 or 70 uh, just to make sure that I, I make it. You know, something to note with electric vehicles is things that makes a, a, you know, a relatively small difference to an ICE vehicle like winds and temperature and the speed you're going make a much larger impact on the electric vehicle. So if you have a headwind and you're driving a little bit over the speed limit and it's cold outside, it's an incredible, I mean, you're talking 30 to 40% drop in in your uh, EPA rated range just because of those conditions. And likewise, if it's a tailwind and it's warm out and not too hot that you're running a bunch of AC, but you know, nice warm temperature and you're driving the speed limit, you'll find yourself getting you know, relatively close to EPA numbers. Every vehicle is a little bit different because um, some vehicles kind of really push the EPA number as high as they can. Other companies restrict the EPA number a little bit and they give a more conservative number to be more realistic to what they expect their customer to achieve in the real world. So that's kind of uh, open to each, com each company to determine what to do. I noticed since I've owned the Polestar, um, it's been pretty difficult to achieve the 250 miles that's rated. However, I still typically get over 200 and it ends up being pretty close to what the ID4 was. The ID4 was rated at 250 miles and I would frequently get in the 230, 220 range. And that seems to be pretty close to what I got uh, in this vehicle. As far as efficiency so far on the drive, so far on the drive, I've gone just over 75 miles, actually 76 miles and I'm getting 39 kilowatt hours per 100 miles. Another interesting thing with electric vehicles is every brand seems to uh, advertise or, or not advertise, use different metrics for the, you know, for how the efficiency is. So Tesla's always give their number in watt hours per mile. Uh, the the uh, Volvo here, or Polestar here, shows how many kilowatt hours you would use to drive 100 miles. And then the third way that uh, the Volkswagen did, which in my opinion was the best way, would show you how many miles you'll get per kilowatt hour. You know, I think that's the easiest for people to comprehend. It's kind of like miles per gallon, miles per kilowatt hour. But, you know, at this point, uh, there hasn't been a standardized method to, to, uh, to show efficiency. So hopefully that gets you know, cleared up in the beginning so it's easier to explain these numbers um, to, to anyone out there. Just doing some quick math, if I'm getting 40 uh, kilowatt hours per 100 miles, I think that comes out to around 2.75 miles per kilowatt hour. It's just some quick math in my head, so I'm not sure. Someone else, uh, you feel free to correct me if I'm off a little bit there, but um, not too bad. I mean, I'm, I've most times with this car, gotten over three miles per kilowatt hour, but certainly given these conditions, I'm expected to uh, struggle a little bit on the efficiency. So hopefully we'll see that number increase and get better as the journey goes on and we get into better weather conditions tomorrow. But for today, it certainly is gonna be a little bit of a struggle to uh, maintain any sort of respectable efficiency. But uh, only, yeah, only 40 more miles to go to Lafayette, Indiana and uh, we'll get charged up and then head off to Indianapolis. just initiated the charge in the app. I'm here in Lafayette, Indiana. Arrived with 10%. Let's see what kind of data we can get. Just, uh, contactors just clicked. Charge starting to ramp up. I went on the PlugShare app and saw that 
charger number three, handle two. Uh, many people had good reports of successful charges. So it looks like we're ramping up here. Hopefully we can pull the full 150 kilowatts. Uh, to anyone out there that does own an electric vehicle, please, when you can, make, um, make reviews on PlugShare. Even if you have a perfect, great experience, leaving that review is very helpful to anyone else out there to say what charger you used, what handle you used, if it's Electrify America where there's multiple handles, and uh, what speeds and, and charging experience you had. That way, uh, when, I'm, when I was on my way here, I'm able to look at this charging charger here, and rather than possibly go into a unit that's not performing well, and, and it's very well possible that all four units here are performing great, but it's also possible that all of them are not performing great. So knowing that charger number three handle two is working well, uh, allows us to get this charging experience right here. So I'm gonna go, uh, I grab some takeout food from Mickey D's, hopefully hoping not to eat, uh, you know, drive through fast food most of the trip, but this is one of those charging stops where we're here at a Walmart and there really isn't much else to do. So I'm gonna eat my food, hit the restroom and uh, come back and see where we're at. All right, I just got back from Walmart running to the restroom and we're already charged up to 51%. So plenty to go to make it to our next stop. Uh, car said we only needed to charge to 46%. So it says we're gonna arrive in, in Indianapolis with 17%. So we have a, a nice chunky buffer, which is great, especially with these winds and the temperatures dropping rapidly. It's gonna drop into the teens here pretty soon. Uh, 71 miles to go to Indianapolis. And uh, on the next drive, I'll kind of explain my charging plan a little bit more. I just arrived here in Indianapolis at yet another Walmart, a lightning charging right next to me, and it's a Sunbelt Rentals Lightning, so uh, actually one of the fleet models. But uh, let's check out the charging. Arrive with 21%, charging ramping up to, it's at 127 right now. Should expect to crawl its way up to 150. Don't know, it's pretty cold, and also this charger is pretty full and doesn't have the best ratings on PlugShare. The uh, navigation here says we should charge to 63% to make it to Louisville. Um, however, that that's arriving with 10%. I have another idea. I'm gonna jump in here and show you my plan. All right, I punched in my hotel for the night. Now, if we click add charging stops, let's see what it suggests. So it's still trying to have me charge here uh, for quite a while and then arrive there dead. My plan though, is since I have level two charging available at the hotel, uh, I'd like to arrive at the hotel with maybe 40-ish percent, and that way I'll gain the other 60% overnight while I'm sleeping. That way I can leave tomorrow with a fresh 100% battery, especially since I have a little extra time today. So there's a charger just north of Louisville that I'm gonna go ahead and punch in. It's actually still in Southern Indiana. I'll punch that into the GPS and we'll charge there for, I don't know, till probably 60%-ish or 50%, then make it to the hotel. What I'm gonna do is charge enough at this next charger in Southern Indiana to make sure I have enough to make it to Lexington. 
because I don't want to have to, if in case for some reason the level two chargers at the hotel um, are broken or occupied, I'll want to make sure that I can make it to Lexington and not have to backtrack to the to the Electrify America in the morning. So I'm going to go punch it in. Let's see what where it is. All right, I was able to use the Electrify America app to find this charger down here in Clarksville, Indiana. You can see it listed as the one right there. And I punched it in and added to my route plan. This is another thing that's great about the Polestar is it lets you, just like Google Maps on your phone or on your computer, you can add stops along the way. So my destination number two is there, which is the Wingate by Wyndham. And I was able to add that I wanna go to uh, number one first. So right now it estimates I would arrive with negative 16%. So it looks like we're gonna need to add another 20% or so up here. Right now we are at 36%, only pulling 126 kilowatt. I would expect it to be 150 right here. I don't know that I wanna mess around trying to jump to a different charger because um, the reviews online showed that kind of a lot of people were experiencing a little bit sluggish charging at some of these, uh, at some of these chargers here. So I'm gonna look at plug share a little more and see if I should swap. I'm charged up to 58%. Not that great of a charging session, um, but I have enough to make it 104 miles down the road to get to uh, Clarksville, Indiana. So time to unplug here and uh, head off down the road. Hopefully a better charging at session at the next one. Indiana. You may remember this stop from the ID4 Disney trip. This is where the uh, tornado siren started going off right before we crossed into Louisville. So it's when it started getting pretty sketchy. Nice and calm tonight. A little bit chilly, but uh, definitely a much better experience being here in these conditions than the tornado warnings. So uh, just plugged in. Charging just started. Hopefully speeds ramp up to uh, the full 150. There was good reviews on both chargers five and six. However, charger six right here is actually down right now. Interesting. But charger five looks to be working pretty good. Uh, getting 122. I'd still like to see a little bit more power out. So I wonder if the car is just running a little bit cold and it's not allowing it to, uh, it's not pre preconditioning enough to get the full power immediately. I've noticed through these chargers though, it still is ramped up throughout the charge and still got its way to like 135, 140 but I'd really like to see the 150 straight from 11% right here. I arrived with 11%. Uh, now charging has climbed its way up to 132 kilowatts. I didn't bother moving because I figured I'm only gonna be here for about 10 minutes anyway, because I put in Lexington, Lexington Kentucky's, that's actually Georgetown, Kentucky, technically, uh, the Electrify America over there. And it says I only need 17% more to make it. So I'll charge here for another 20% or so. And that way, in case my hotel's chargers are uh, occupied or not working properly, I know I'll have enough to just make it to Lexington, Kentucky, because I'm staying on the east side of Louisville. So, um, so I wouldn't wanna have to backtrack all that distance. Now my plan is to uh, run over, run into yet another Walmart, hit, hit the restroom, and then I'll uh, go to find a place to go eat dinner in Louisville. And uh, yeah, then that'll be it for the night. And then we'll, uh, so 
after I go to Walmart, we'll drive over to Louisville and then I'll uh, check in tomorrow. All right, charged up to 56%, so I have plenty of buffer in case anything goes wrong at the hotel. So I'm gonna go ahead and unplug and head off to Louisville and get some dinner. Good morning from Louisville, Kentucky. Uh, we were able to get a charger outside, so we're charged up to 90%. And as soon as we get out there, we're gonna do some math. Um, we we'll charge 90% because I forgot to bump it to 100% before I went to sleep. So good job by me. And I just woke up and just got ready to go. So I'm going to go run downstairs, eat some quick breakfast, and uh, head out to the car and see if we're able to skip Lexington. I suspect because of the cold weather, we were probably going to have to stop in Lexington no matter what. But uh, we'll see. So sorry for the truck noise. So I'm just going to be really quick here. I'm actually going to do a full in-depth video about this uh adapter here that allows you to use the Tesla plug. But as you see here, there is uh, Clipper Creek chargers. Excellent chargers, super durable. I can't recommend these enough. However, I can guarantee, almost guarantee you these probably only deliver 32 amps. Almost every time I've run into them in public, they're 32 amps. They could be higher, but most times they're not. But these Tesla chargers here typically deliver 40 to 48 amps. So using this adapter, I'm actually able to get a higher speed, which allowed me to get to 90% before the end of the night. So it looks like my mistake to bump the charger might not be a problem. Uh, Electrify America here in Williamsburg, Kentucky, it says, well, it's 166 miles away and it says we will arrive with 5%. So right now we're at 90%. And uh, yeah, I'm gonna hit the road. And if I see this 5% drop down at all, I can always pull off in Lexington and top up a little bit there. But uh, I think we go, we go for it and try to make it to Williamsburg, Kentucky. Yeah, I just wanted to highlight. So Williamsburg, Kentucky, right down here by the Tennessee border. And Lexington's right here. There is a, a, a Electrify America up there. One thing I did notice is, looks like a couple of the chargers are broken in Williamsburg. So I'll have to think about it. Um, another way I could do this is go ahead and top up a little bit in Lexington to skip Williamsburg. But uh, I'll figure it out as we get a little bit further down the road. said I would arrive with 5%, that's actually gone down to 4%. So I have a decision to make. I'm two hours away, so it makes this math really easy to figure out. If I slow down by five miles an hour for two hours, that will add 10 minutes of driving time. However, since the charger in Lexington is a fair bit north of the highway, it would take far more than 10 minutes to go up there and charge. So I think it's better for me to just slow down a little bit, maybe uh, follow a truck a for a little bit and make sure that I arrive with a, a you know, five to 6% state of charge. I really don't like arriving with a three or four just because the vehicle seriously struggles to maintain highway speed at that point. And because we're going through Kentucky, uh, it's, it's very hilly and, and uh, I wouldn't say mountainous, but certainly hilly where the car would struggle to go up some of the hills when it gets to that low of a state of charge. The reason the Polestar struggles uh, when it gets to lower state of charges is it has a very, very small buffer in the battery pack. So like when I had the Volkswagen, uh, it was an 82 kilowatt hour battery pack and 77 was usable. So it had a five kilowatt hour battery. Some other brands even use bigger than five kilowatt hour ba um, buffers. Well, in the Polestar here, it's a 78 kilowatt hour battery uh, and only 75 is usable. So a three kilowatt hour buffer is very, very small. And that results in the car being extra cautious when you get to a low state of charge to rest restrict how much power it gives you because you don't want to pull all that voltage out of the pack that can, uh, if the car you know, allowed you to um, have a little more performance, you could potentially damage the battery and it would prevent it from charging all the way. You know, because typ typically it's just like a, a phone battery or anything. It never actually charges to a hundred, a true hundred percent and it never discharges to a true zero 
it's actually, there's a little bit uh, on each side. So like, you know, a couple kilowatt hours on the bottom and top of the battery pack that actually never get used or never get drained um, to help protect the battery. of no return. So with uh, running at a little bit slower speed, running at 75 miles an hour, as I showed earlier, and I uh, have the heat off. I've had the heat off for about, I don't know, 10, 15 minutes. Even though it's 32 degrees, uh, the sun is really cooking inside the car here, and it's actually not too bad. I'm a little chilled at my feet, but, you know, in the essence of uh, would I rather drive slower or have no heat, I choose drive slower. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, I'm, uh, I'm in passing through Lexington right now, and through doing these things, I've been able to increase the estimated arrival to 8%. So I feel pretty comfortable that uh, I'm gonna go ahead and push it. So now the only thing to find out is, when I get 100 miles down the road, is the charger available and does it work, since there's only one operable right now. So this uh, certainly is gonna be more anxiety than I wanted to start my day with. away from my destination uh, as you see here I will arrive with nine percent uh, it's been bounced back between eight and nine percent so I'm pretty comfortable with that I was able to you know run without the heat off for a while and still maintain pretty good speeds and I ended up uh, ended up working out perfect to get that charge at the hotel and avoid Lexington since that's a little bit off the a little bit of, of a delay to you know it's a little bit a couple miles off the freeway to get to the Lexington charger but uh, something I wanted to show here, if you haven't seen the previous road trip that I did with this vehicle, this is what I was talking about, about the power being severely restricted. Let me make this bigger. There we go. So you can see there that grayed out area on the right side of the power. Essentially, about a third of my power is being limited right now. So if I was to put the pedal down, um, I certainly would still be able to accelerate at 10% here. But that started uh, dwindling away at about 18, 19%. So, sorry about the glare, by the way. But it started restricting my power uh, at about 18, 9% and slowly been crawling down. And when I get to the charger, I'll try to uh, show when, even when it's down at eight or 9%, how much it's limited. And once you get down to five or 6%, it's literally limited to about, I'll, I'll accelerate to about there. So I'm literally driving with um, only about a quarter of the normal horsepower. And the reason, in my opinion, that's dangerous. Back when I had my Volkswagen, people would say, uh, comment, frequent comments would be, well, you know, uh, the Volkswagen bus is a much bigger vehicle and only had, you know, 60 horsepower or something like that. I get that, but the major difference is you knew you're only having 60 horsepower. So every time you drive that bus, you would know that you have a low horsepower vehicle and you would know how to drive it. When you have a vehicle like this Polestar that has a lot of power and you're used to being able to accelerate on the highway and make a pass to you know get around a vehicle before you have to change lanes, etc., and all of a sudden that power is not there, that becomes a safety issue. So you need to be aware that the power is being limited and adapt the way you drive the vehicle um, to know you're not going to have the power to jump around a vehicle before your exit. You need to lay back and, you know, kind of drive it like it is an old Volkswagen bus, for lack of a better word, or, or a Prius, basically, is what the power limit is about right now. So 
it's just something to be aware of that when you are getting to the lower state of charge, you, you need to drive a little bit differently than if you had a full battery. I've made it to Williamsburg, Kentucky, and it looks like I got pretty lucky. I was able to initiate this uh, Chatamo unit, even though the screen is completely dead, but I was able to initiate it with the app. The uh, Volkswagen here is charging on another charger. I didn't know that more than one charger was working, so that's interesting. But now let's go in the car. The good news I have is I'm at 115 kilowatt and slowly ramping up from there. It's up to 117 now. Hopefully it keeps bumping up. Um, the great news with that is when I looked on PlugShare, people were saying one charger is working great. And some people were saying only one was working, that the other three are broken. Some people are saying one of the other three was still working, but working very slowly. So it looks like I may have been lucky and got the one that's uh, producing the good speeds. I haven't looked over and seen what the Volkswagen's getting. I want to take a peek at his screen and see if he's actually getting good power or if he's power limited to like about 30, like other people have uh, claimed to receive. I also wanted to note that I arrived with 11% since uh, if the screen is broken, I might struggle to get good data from it, obviously, but uh, arrived with 11%, been charging for just a couple minutes now. Like I said, hopefully the speed keeps pumping up a little bit. I'm going to go run into Walmart, hit the bathroom, and uh, come back and see if we're ready to go. All right, so my luck definitely paid off already today, and I'll show you why. I ran into Walmart and went and got something to eat, and during that few minutes that I've been charging look at this a bolt pulled up and a Tycon pulled up so they uh here we are in a situation where there's four cars here trying to charge but only two of the chargers are working so luckily I'm done I'll be able to unplug and one of these guys will be able to take my spot but this is where that charger reliability becomes incredibly important because these people are sitting here and if more electric cars show up over time it's just going to create a line and a backup when there shouldn't be charged up to almost 70 percent going to go ahead and stop the charge and only 74 miles to knoxville tennessee if you're ever in a situation like this where the screen is broken all you have to do in the pull start to stop the charge is just hit the plug button and it'll un stop the charge unlock and you'll be able to be on your way Knoxville, Tennessee, where my luck has ran out. This is because here is the charging situation. There's a Nissan Leaf using the Chatamo unit. Looks like they're almost at 70%. Uh, Ford Lightning, this is the same, I think the same Lightning from yesterday because it's the United Rentals uh, Lightning. He's also at about 70%. And I'm here on charge number three, which is broken. And charger number four is broken. So I'll be waiting for one of them to uh, free up a charging spot so I can hop in and charge. So kind of frustrating because I um, was really looking forward, making great time today, looking forward to getting a good charge here and then heading off to uh, go do the tail of the dragon. Now I'm gonna have to wait a little bit and uh, it's still, you know, it still is only one, just after one o'clock. So I'll still be fine for my day because I got a good start in the morning, but it's the unfortunate little things like this that you have to plan for when you're doing a trip. You can't just assume if Google says it's gonna take, you know, whatever, a 10 hour day, you can't assume it'll be a 10 hour day because 
there'll be little hiccups like this that'll cost you, uh, you know, 10 minutes here, 20 minutes there. So I definitely lucked out at the last charging stop, though I got there just in time before uh, the other car showed up, so I got a good charge there. But I just have to wait until one of these people are done and I can take over uh, their charger. Another cool feature that I don't think I've run across before, you know, normally when I'm doing, have been done a trip in this car, I just put in my destination and you know, it'll show me that I, you know, I'll arrive with negative some percent, and so it'll add the charges accordingly. Uh, however, you know, and usually it's just the route that Google prefers is the route I'm gonna take. However, this is one of those scenarios where I wanna go a different route because I wanna take the tail of the dragon here. So I put in, you know, that I wanna arrive in Asheville, and I wanna go to the Deals Gap Motorcycle Resort to go uh, eat over there, and, and, um, and, and that's at the end of the tail. So, it actually shows me I'll arrive at Deals Gap with 13 and at the Electrify American Asheville with negative 32%. And since I have 40% right here, I know I need to charge, you know, I'll, I'll make sure I charge a little extra. I'll probably charge to 80 or 85% just to give extra buffer so I can uh, drive a little more spirited. But yeah, that's a pretty cool feature that I don't think I've run across before. So another feature actually that I hadn't discovered on the first, you know, 8,000 miles of driving is I have my trip computer here. Sorry if it's, there we go. There's my odometer. But actually I can set my trip computer here. So I could choose the distance or the time I've been driving. But instead I chose my efficiency here. So it shows that so far uh, today, since I woke up, I'm getting 36.2 kilowatt hours per 100 miles. So that's just under three miles per kilowatt hour. So right now I'm at 52%, uh, only pulling 85 kilowatts. I would expect it to be just a touch higher than that. The uh, lightning just left. Um, I was going to stop this charge and move over to that spot, but I was trying to stop it in the app and it was, um, the cell service here is a little bit weak. I've run into an issue like this in the past where I went ahead and stopped the charger in a place that cell service was weak. And then it kind of crashed my app because the app still thought I'm charging, even though I wasn't. So then I had trouble initiating the next charge. So I'm just gonna, sit here, you know, at 85, you know, what would I have been otherwise? Maybe a hundred. So we're only talking a couple extra minutes and at least it's plugged in and charging right now. So I look at it and say, uh, you know, I'll just be here for another 20 to 25 minutes and then uh, off to the tail of the dragon. I'm charged up to 75%. So I still have another five to 10% to go. Like I said, I want to make sure there's a buffer, but I figured I haven't showed you what my, what charging cables I brought, bring with when I hit the road. So let me show you that real quick. By the way, really cool uh, Ionic 5 pulled up a couple of minutes ago. Um, looks pretty good. St still looks like there must be something going on with charge number 2-2 because he wasn't pulling uh, the speeds I would expect him to as well. But uh, nonetheless, here we go. Here's our charging solution under the frunk of the Polestar 2. This is just the fix-a-flat kit, so ignore that. This is the old Tesla adapter I used to use, so pretty chunky. Here's the new one um, I just started using from Lectron. Definitely, it's a link down below. I'll do a full review of it, um, comparing, um, you know, why it's good to have a Tesla adapter when you're on the road. But here's the other charging cable that came with the car. So this is the NEMA 1450 outlet. And you see it has a little plug like this on the end because this car comes with two of them. So similar to Tesla where you can change out the ends. This is the 120. As you can see, it's still in the wrapping that it came with because I don't use a 120 charger, but it's good to have it with. Um, this charger is capable of 32 amps. Sometimes at home, it's actually drawn a little bit more than that. Not sure why that is, but typically we'll charge at 32 amps, which is about, I think nine, no, seven kilowatts. So um, yeah, pretty conveniently fits in the frunk. So nice to keep it out of the way. And uh, the back of the car can be reserved for all my luggage. Charging has slowed down significantly uh, due to you know my state of charge. I'm all the way up to 86%. And uh, now that I turn climate off, because it has been pretty nice outside now, um, car is registering 66 degrees. There, you can probably see it. It's not that warm. That's just heat rolling off the battery. But still, the sun is doing a pretty good job of warming up. So I don't think I'll have to actually have climate on for this drive. And because of that, that immediately jumped it up to saying I will arrive with 13%. So that's a nice buffer. I think I'll wait maybe just two more percent. So if I leave here with 88 and my Estimated arrival is 15. That gives me about 10% I can burn off, uh, you know, on the drive. So I think uh, just a couple more minutes and I'll be out of here. 
All right, charge to 88%. Gonna go ahead and unplug and hit the road to the tail of the dragon. I've arrived from the Tale of the Dragon drive. If you want a lot more detail into the drive, seeing a lot more of the scenery, definitely check out my 10,000 mile review that I did of this car. Uh, that should be up before that should be up before uh, this video, uh, this road trip video goes up. So we'll see where we're at right now. We are at 66%. Good thing I didn't rely on the uh, Tesla destination charger because it's right here behind this fence. And they are closed for the season, so glad I charged a little extra in Knoxville. Now let's see uh, what the rest of the drive is. So we'll remove this stop from Deals Gap Motorcycle Resort because it's right here. Looks like they're closed up too. And uh, yeah, so we have 103 miles. Oop, sorry about that. There we go. We have 103 miles to go. It thinks we should arrive with 18%. That sounds pretty accurate um, since we're at 66% as I said right now. Camera's having a little trouble focusing. But uh, we're gonna hit the road and off to Asheville, North Carolina. Just went and used the restroom while I'm here at this, uh, at the uh, restaurant here. You know, cool to, pretty cool on them to have the uh, porta potties open to the public even during off season hours. Also just wanted to highlight their charging situation. They have a Clipper Creek unit here, which they have set up for, you know, motorcycle charging or uh, just any EV, but I think motorcycles probably get the most use out of this since they have a shorter range and they certainly burn through a lot of it on this drive. And a Tesla charger, Tesla destination charger. So pretty cool to see that they have these chargers here that really help people. Uh, you know, sometimes you're going to use a little more energy than you'd expect when you're driving on a road like this. And so being able to come here, come in and get some good food and uh, charge up. It's a pretty good uh, situation, I think. Pretty good to have those that that uh, those amenities definitely bring in more customers, you would think. And customers might linger around a little more because they're trying to get a little bit extra juice while they're here. So certainly works out to uh, both parties' benefit at the end of the day.
welcome to Asheville at, this time, a Sam's Club and a full charger, an ID4 just pulled in next to me. There's a couple EV6s right over there and charging is going well so far. Arrived with 22%, already ripped right up to 140 kilowatts. So let's uh, take a peek at how far we, how much we need to charge to make it to Charlotte. All right, we're ripping along all the way, already up to 42%, still pulling 108 kilowatts. And uh, here's what the GPS thinks. So to get to Charlotte, we need uh, about 72% it estimates. So I'll go ahead and just uh, agree with the Google there because I don't mind if I arrive with a couple extra and I arrive with say, you know, 12, 15%. That's great because I need to run around a little bit tomorrow and then I'll plug it in uh, tomorrow afternoon to do like a full like eight hour charge on a level two plug that's uh, nearby my sister's apartment. So um, yeah, looks like it should be here for another, I don't know, uh, 10 to 15 minutes and then I'll be on my way, probably 15 minutes. So uh, as I mentioned earlier, uh, about 130, just over 130 miles to go to Charlotte. Actually, technically it's Southwestern Charlotte, but still technically Charlotte proper. Um, barring anything completely out of the ordinary, I uh, assume this charge should just keep going along. It's running at 90 kilowatts right now, just at about 55%. So, you know, I'll, I'll walk over to the vehicle. We'll take a quick peek at what it's at, but I'll charge up to 72, 75%, something like that. And then I'll hit the road. Um, you know, I'll show you the rest of the, the, you know, drive all the way to Charlotte from here, even though it's kind of dark out, so there won't be too much to show. And uh, barring anything crazy happening, that's, uh, this will be a great point to end episode two. If there's more of me talking later, then it wasn't the end of episode two, but most likely this will be. And uh, thank you so much for watching. If you've made it this far, please do like and subscribe if you've found the content helpful and you've enjoyed this road trip. Be sure to stay tuned for episode two, which will, as I mentioned earlier, be my uh, sister and her husband's first time experience an electric vehicle in a road trip, seeing uh, you know how they adapt, how they adapt to the stops for charges, etc., all that sort of stuff. And um, take care until next time. All right, the uh, ID4, the Mach E, the EV6, all have already left, so I'm the last one left here charging. I'm about to be done in just a couple minutes. I just wanted to reiterate how how great this car has been for me. Knock on wood. Uh, you know, picked it up in Denver, you know, cannonballed it across the country to San Diego, then from San Diego all the way around, uh, through Phoenix, Texas, uh, Oklahoma to get all the way to Louisville for a wedding. And I had a, it was in a time crunch to make that happen. And the, the scar, you know, got me to all the chargers and ripped and run through every charger. It just charges like a monster compared to the ID4. Uh, although the ID4 update that supposedly is coming will equal the playing field on that. Um, and it just, I, it just a happy place to be. Uh, I Nothing against the ID4, I liked that car a lot. It did everything very well. This car has, no doubt, has a couple little flaws, but um, it does so many other things in such, a, does such a great job at so many other things like the performance side and, you know, just having that sporty, more premium feel uh, really makes me happy to call it my, my car every day. I'm not sure how long I will own this car uh, as, as with all of, YouTube adventures, uh, it's always uh, no time frame anticipated. Most likely it'll be owned for a year, but who knows. But yeah, just a great, great machine to get me from Chicago to now just outside of Charlotte and hopefully in a couple hours in Charlotte and then off to Disney World.